how to fill out an incident report. Howdy guys, welcome to Making Dough Show. This is Hingham and today I wanted to share with you a behind the scene of a training video that I'm doing for our team regarding how to properly fill out an incident report. It's gonna be a matter of time and life and working in any kind of a workplace environment where there is gonna be an incident. There's gonna be an incident with another team member. There may be an incident with your boss. There may be an incident with an employee you work with. And of course, there may be an incident with a customer and you are gonna be asked to fill out an incident report. Why am I talking about this is because in the last week we've had a couple of incidences happen um, in our restaurants. One was uh, an incident with a customer who was uh, angry and rude in the dining room, very loud. And some things happen in the dining room and we asked our team to fill out an incident report. So I hear them talk about different stuff, the staff. And then when I ask them to fill out an incident report and document and communicate what they observed, I look at their incident report. I'm like, this is not really that much of a tangible information. There is so much information missing based on what you told me, or this person told me, this person told me versus what's written here. So I realized it seems like we don't know, and we need training on how to even fill out an incident report. So that is what this training is about for our team. And I'd like to share that with you. Uh, if you've not dealt with an incident uh, in your business uh, recently, it may be that at some point you will very soon. And the time to get equipped, the time to equip your team is when you don't need that skill set. So when the skill set is needed, we already are equipped to handle that skill set set, if you know what I mean. I have a quick training for you going over how to fill out an incident report. Uh, while you're working here with us or anywhere in the future, or even in your personal life, you may get into a car accident. I hope not, but you know what I'm saying? This is life and incidents happen all the time on planet earth. So this is going to be, hopefully this training is going to be helpful for you, not only while you're here with us at Matangas, but also beyond and in your personal life to have a strategy, have a mindset of when you're asked to fill out an incident report, when you're asked to log information and document something to understand how to do it properly, uh, that is tangible. The information needs to be tangible and useful. And we're going to go over that today. First off is, you know, if you were working, you know, in our restaurants, there may be incidents with customers. There may be an incident with another team member. There may be an incident with your coworker, your boss, or what have you. There are incidences all the time, or somebody falls. That is an incident that just happened, or a car accident, a driver is on the job. These are all the incident reports and that we're gonna need uh, a document written in writing for the incident. Now, as the incident is happening, immediately as it's happening or immediately after, maybe there is a car accident, the driver, that is on the job out there that happened, you need to recognize that this is not a normal situation and I'm probably gonna need to fill out an incident report, okay? Why am I telling you that? Because that is gonna make sure that you are aware of things as they're happening and disengage yourself a little bit to understand this is a moment, this is an incident, this is not normal. Do you know what I mean? So if you're a customer is rude and they get really loud and they start cussing, you're like, uh oh, I probably need to fill out an incident report regarding this. So be mindful of the words, the sequences of things that are happening, all of that. So if you can remember that as it's happening, know that, uh oh, this is an incident. This is not normal. And I need to remember every detail about this conversation and what's happening. There are stats out there that I could research and tell you, but when an incident happens, whether it's a you know, uh, you've seen that probably in movies that there is like a shooting and the police uh, arrives on the scene. They go into a room, they get shot. This happens, that happens. And obviously immediately after they need to, to fill out an incident report uh, for a police officer. And as time goes by, they constantly forget many of the details of what happened. This is standard statistics out there. So when an incident happens, be sure to require your team and those people involved to immediately, as soon as possible, to fill out an incident report. And you, we may have forms for that. If not, all you need is a piece of paper and a pen, okay? So as soon as we can capture that incident report, the better to make sure all the details are as fresh as possible. When you fill out an incident report, there are two parts. One is being objective 
and simply documenting everything that you've observed without incorporating your judgment, um, your feelings in the middle of it. You're being as objective as possible. So how does that look like is at, you know, you may have the exact time around 3.30 PM. For instance, there was a case of a customer who fell in our dining room. So this is an incident that happened actually this last week. If for instance, you are like, I was working on the make line when I heard a loud sound in the dining room at first, you know, whatever it was. And then like, I proceeded to go in and, you know, John and Julie and Susan, we all walked to see what happened, uh, in the dining room, the husband, uh, told us, and I'm, and you need to quote exactly what the customer was saying that they were rude. That's vague that they raised their voice. Okay. They're, they were speaking loudly and they said, F you, you are horrible. You suck, whatever you need to quote exactly what the customer said. If a customer words came out of their mouth, you need to quote exactly what the customer said the best as you can. Yes. You need to use their words, maybe just the S and the F word, whatever not the full thing I understand, but it is not going to be tangible for you to tell me the customer was rude. That is very vague. We need to be specific. If this goes to court, I can't just say the customer was rude. No, I need to be able to exactly say that they looked at our minor young lady staff member and said, you suck and you should not be here and go get me someone else and da, 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 whatever. I don't know, I'm making stuff up, but you get my point. Whatever the customer said, you need to document and quote the words that came out of their mouth. That is being objective and sequencing what happened. The customer said X, Y, Z. Then they kicked the right corner of the train table and the train table kicked the wall and it went over here. Then they proceeded to go and sit down. Whatever happened, you need to simply put your observer hat on and be objective of exactly what you saw, what happened based on what you saw and what you heard. This is just the facts of you observing the incident, if that makes sense. So that's the objective part. So when I'm looking at a, an incident report, I want to see sequences of what happened then this happened then that happened and time stamps the best you can. And also quotes exactly the words that the best you can remember from the customer. Then there is a subjective part of the incident report that when the customer raised their voice and they told you to F you and get out of whatever thing it was that you felt threatened, that you were concerned for your safety and the safety of your team members. That's a subjective, uh, observation of yours, which is also valid. It's valid point that you felt threatened and you were concerned for your safety. So you do need to document that, but you need to understand one thing is the objective of what happened, what was exactly said and how you felt. And again, both are valid points and everything need to be documented that you chose not to approach the customer because they were cussing at you and they said X, Y, and Z, and you felt threatened for your safety. And you chose not to go and further talk to this customer. If you felt disrespected, you felt offended you were afraid those things you write those things down capture footage immediately as an incident either as it's happening it may be between a team member over there and a customer and you are an observing team member if you can capture footage and take videos or photos please do that Sat, you know this is the world we live in we need footage we need to see exactly what happened to be able to make a proper judgment call so if you are in a position to capture footage please do so if you are on the job and you're out there, I sure hope never it happens to you. If you're in a car accident, if you observe anything that happens out there and you're able to take pictures, take pictures of the incident immediately after the incident. Be very mindful of your behavior and the words that come out of your mouth and your body language during an incident and after an incident. Here is why you never know where this incident of whatever may happen may go. It may be that somebody may press charges for whatever reason. And, um, if you said something that is not going to hold in court, did you open your mouth and you said something disrespectful to this customer or to a team member, you actually used words 
that are threatening, you know, again, because we watch movies and all kinds of stuff come out of people's mouths uh, in Hollywood, but it is, you know, and you may be able to speak like that in high school, but in the real world, in the job setting, you can't just say something threatened. Well, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to find you or you will, whatever. I'm just making stuff up. And if you say those kinds of things, be incredibly mindful because they will come back and bite you. So it's better for you to hold off on the words that come out of your mouth and be mindful of what this is. And this is an incident and be the smart one, hold off your mouth and observe more than you speak. As an employer, I want to have my employees back, but if an employee opens their mouths and they say things and what have you, I'm not, I'm not able to save that employee. So be mindful of if the customer is the one who's rude and is cussing and what have you is one thing that still does not give you the right as an employee to open your mouth and be disrespectful. This is not about logic. This is not about what's right or wrong. Do you know what I mean? This is not the context of this situation. This is an incident and you need to be um, saying as little as possible unless you're actually trying to stay focused and solve this issue. Last but not least, incidents will always happen. Again, in your life, in the workplace, it doesn't matter. It's only a matter of time. So don't make it a, be a huge deal. Don't ruin your day. Maybe, you know, we have an incident happens and, you know, you're going to get upset. It's very unpleasant to be part of. I've sadly had had the fortune of being part of many, many incidences with customers, with team members all the time. Keep poised. This happens. We live on planet earth. This is bound to happen and it is okay. Document it the best you can make sure that you are not at fault as best as you can and be objective. Consider the subjective parts and know that this is a resume building moment. Uh, at some point in the future, you're going to be asked, Hey, when was a very stressful situation you've been part of and how did you handle it? That is a resume building moment for you handling an incident. This is a high pressure moment where you want to lose control and act like the other person. And you are demonstrating, um, your maturity of character, uh, and your strength of character in these situations. So again, this is a resume building moment. Remember it and document it that you can use in the future. As always, know that we appreciate you. Um, we're sorry that you are going through this incident that has happened at your store. And we are here to support you. And we appreciate you filling out incident reports as best as you can. So we can support the team. We have tangible information that in case if it ends up in court or for whatever reason, we can do what's best for all people involved. There you have it, folks. Uh, this was just a quick training for our team uh, dealing with incidences, unpleasant things in the business, in the restaurant business or any business or in life. So this is uh, what it is. Uh, I hope that you don't have to deal with incidents, but you know you will and you know you are. So that's what's going to be. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions for me you'd like me to cover in a future show. And with that, let's get back to work and make some dough. Thank you. Bye-bye.